I'll start with the short version. Modern GPUs only do three things. They draw filled triangles, they interpolate between two existing values, and they execute a lot of code in parallel. Because of this, the next part is divided into, well, two parts. You can do either one in either order, you're going to have to do both of them eventually, and feel free to pick which one you want to do next. If that's enough explanation for you, then go ahead, pick your video, and go ahead and start coding. But, if you'd like to know a little bit more, if you're curious as to why on earth this would cause the video to split into two parts, or you're curious about how you could possibly do anything useful by just doing these three functions, then watch on. So, now it's time for the long version. And for this, I'm going to start by talking about how, specifically, the modern GPU generates images. And it all starts with one very simple thing. Data. Nothing more, nothing less. Not specific data, not data in one specific format, not data organized in a way that's determined by some big, fancy computer organization somewhere. No, just ordinary data. As far as the GPU is concerned, it looks like this. Just zeros and ones, arbitrary data. It can be anything. If you really wanted to, you could take your copy of Windows, send it to the GPU, and see what it comes up with, and it'll do something. This can... <laughs> it probably won't make a lot of sense, but you can do it. it. It's just data. It could be textures, it could be models, it can be absolutely anything. As far as it's concerned, it's just data. Nothing more, nothing less. So, now that we've got that across, what does the GPU do with it? Because obviously it can't just take every single possible format of data in existence and expect to make sense of it. So, what it does is it does some processing. It takes the data and it converts it into sort of, well, what you would might have expect this, there to be some sort of standard form, some way that all GPUs, well, at least your, your GPU, can make sense of it. And it will do this by taking the data, it will take it in parallel. So it will take every individual unit of data, and you can tell the GPU what exactly a unit of data is, so there's no specific standard for that. Again, it's whatever data you want. It'll take it in individual units, it will do all those units in parallel and do processing to convert it into a form that the GPU will be able to make sense of and will be able to do something with. And that form is... dots. And specifically, dots that will connect into a triangle. So that's what this stage will do. Just take the data, whatever data you gave it, process it, convert it into points that can be connected into a triangle. It won't actually connect them just yet, but it will convert them into the points that can be connected. And in OpenGL lingo, this stage is called the vertex shader. So what happens once it has all these, all these points which can potentially connect into a triangle? Well, guess what? It connects them. And this is called rasterization. Yet another example of a big, gigantic tech word that sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. So it'll take all these points that you created, which can potentially connect into triangles, and guess what? It's going to connect them. But it's not just going to connect them. It will, once it connects them, it's actually going to fill it in. So sort of a two, stage, two stages here. It'll connect all the points into the triangle, and then it'll actually fill it in. And your triangle at this point, if you, that's what your data was representing, would look something like this. This is what these points, for instance, would probably create. Just a triangle. Nothing fancy about it, just it's filled in all the points and you got a triangle. So cool. Now you got a triangle. Now obviously, we see a lot more on our screens than just triangles. So it doesn't just leave it here, it does a little bit more than that. It'll do even more processing. It'll take all these triangles that you generated, or more specifically, it won't take them whole triangles at a time. It'll actually take individual pixels from the triangle. So at this point, it knows what every individual pixel, I guess, is in the triangle, is part of the triangle. And it'll just send those pixels to the processor. So 
you know, it's generating pixels, working with pixels. And for every individual pixel in the triangle, it'll do some form of processing. And the goal of this, generate colors. Generate some color that that pixel is going to be. And, well, that's all the stage processing does. Takes every individual pixel from the triangle, generates some color for it. There you go. And in OpenGL lingo, this stage of processing is called a fragment shader. So now we got the triangle that's generated. We have all the individual pixels for the triangle. We know what colors those pixels should be. What now? Well, now it's pretty simple. It just takes your output image and writes all the pixels to them. Again, in parallel. All the stuff is done in parallel. So there you go. You got the output image. All the pixels are written to it. And it doesn't stop here. You might think that the output image would just be written to your display, but no. It actually will have a whole bunch of these these entire pipelines, including the data processing, rasterization, more processing, output image, whole pipeline. All of this, it'll have a whole bunch of these, all of them working in parallel. So there's even more parallel stuff going on, believe it or not. And all of these will work together and just keep writing more and more pixels into the output image. And eventually, it'll say, okay, enough already, things are done. Once all those pipelines are finished, once all the data has been fully processed and created all the pixels for the output image, that is when, well, oh, and the output image, if you had a triangle like this, might look something like this, so, you know, just takes colors and put them in a triangle. So, but once you have all that, that is finally when the image is sent to your display, and you might get that triangle in it. And just to be clear, even though I do have sort of like a gradient going here, that's just an example. You really do have per pixel control over what color is generated in this triangle. You can make it just white noise if you really wanted to. And that, in a nutshell, is how the modern GPU generates images. So, now that we've got that out of the way, now that we hopefully understand how the GPU generates images, I can finally talk about why exactly we're sort of branching here, why we have two different ways we can go. And it has to do with this pipeline, because there's sort of two things we're going to need to give this pipeline in order to actually produce the image. And the first thing is data. We're going to have to give the GPU data in some form or another. Again, it can be data in any form you can possibly imagine, but we're going to have to give data in some form or another. And it's not hard, it's just we're going to have to tell the GPU a lot about our data. We're not only going to have to send it to the GPU, but we're going to have to tell the GPU how it has to interpret the data so that, you know, like, this, this is this part of the data, this is this other part of the data, this is this other part of the data. We're going to have to tell the GPU how big one unit of data is. And, you know, there's, there's a little bit to that. So that's one thing we're going to have to do in order to actually, you know, do this pipeline. We're going to have to give it some data to actually draw with. The other thing is the, these processing stages. As I sort of hinted at a little bit, the GPU doesn't know how to handle every single format of data in existence. It's also not going to know, just from a triangle, what you want your final pixels to be. So, this is where we're going to have to do another thing, and that's called shader creation. We're going to have to create a vertex shader and a fragment shader, which are pretty much just programs, just code, except they are executed by the GPU in these very specific positions. That's pretty much the only difference from between shaders and normal code. And we're going to have to write them. We're going to have to give the GPU some shaders to, one, take the data and convert it into a form that, can, that it can generate triangles from, and two, take all the pixels that the GPU generates and actually decide what color they should be. We're going to have to write two programs for that, a vertex shader and a fragment shader. And that's sort of its own task. It's, well, for one, we're going to have to figure out how to program the GPU. That's not going to be trivial, but we're also going to have to figure out a way to actually send that code to the GPU. So that's another task in and of itself. And those are really our two sort of tasks up ahead, the two things we're going to have to do to actually generate an image, and that's why I'm sort of branching the videos here. There's two ways we're going to have to go. We're going to have to go through both of them, and that is one, mesh creation. That's our data. That's creating data that we can actually 
eventually end up drawing. And two, shaders. We're going to have to create some form of programs that's going to take that data it, and, you know, actually, well, do these stages of processing. One, convert it for rasterization, and two, generate the final pixels for it. So, there you go. Hopefully that gives you a bit more insight into how the modern GPU works, which is going to be important for later, and hopefully that explains why we're going two different paths. You're going to have to go through both of them anyways, like I've said, so just pick one. It doesn't matter which one you go to next. You're going to have to go through both of them, and after that, we'll be back on track. We'll be back able to do things in a nice, orderly sequence. So thank you, and see you in whichever video you want to go to next.